Good morning, and welcome to First Congregational Church in St. Albans, Vermont. My name is the Reverend Jessica Moore, and I'm joined this morning by Stephen Conradi on piano, Aaron Granger, our music director, and Stephen McLaughlin, who is our videographer this morning. First Congregational Church is a member of the United Church of Christ. We are a welcoming community of believers, seekers, and doubters. And please know that no matter where you are on your journey, you are welcome here to travel with us. I want to make an announcement today. We are returning to in-person worship in the beginning of May. We will be meeting outside in our pollination garden, pollinator garden, and apple tree. Um, but we need your help. So I am calling to you, the extroverts among us. We need greeters. We need greeters to greet and to help sign people in for contact tracing. Welcoming hospitality is important to us as Christians, and contact tracing is important to us so that we can meet in person. We will train you. So if you are an extrovert and you would like to greet, give me a call and we'll set you up. Thank you. Please join me for the morning prayer. God of love and light, we come as witnesses of your glory and faithfulness, amazed to discover your transformative love God, we desire for you to abide within us and for your grace to be revealed anew daily. Be, be with us and, and awaken within us the call to love, to love one, one another in a way, way it was made real through, through Jesus the Christ. Christ. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise, verses 1 and 4. In the Pilgrim Hymnal, it's number 7. Something more incredible and horrible. 
But regardless of all of that, be reminded that God loves you and walks with you. And for you to share that love with others. Amen.
when Jesus talks about repentance and, the, and forgiveness, he's talking about us letting go of those things that we've done, that we're sorry about. We don't have to carry those things. That's forgiveness. And it starts here. Let's have a little prayer. Holy Creator, we are grateful to be guided. We know that our behavior is questionable sometimes, and we say things we don't mean, and we do things we shouldn't. And we can be contrite and sorry, and we'll try harder the next time. But we should also remember that it's okay to let it go and lighten our hearts so that we can love you and each other more fully. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Hebrew scriptures reading is Psalm number four. Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You set me at liberty when I was in trouble. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you nobles dishonor my glory? How long will you love vain things and seek after falsehood? But, you know, but know that the Lord has shown me his marvelous kindness. When I call upon the Lord, God will hear me. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. You have put gladness in my heart more than with their corn and wine and oil increase. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for it is you, Lord, only, who make me dwell in safety. This morning's Gospel reading is Luke, chapter 24, verses 36 through 48. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself, stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look, my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Well, in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything that is written about me in the law of Moses the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning with Jerusalem. You are witness of these things. This morning's Gospel reading is Luke's take on what happened after the resurrection. Last week we heard John's story of the disciples, fearful and locked in their room, the story of doubting Thomas. Luke's post-resurrection story has some parallels to John's. Jesus appears to the disciples seemingly out of nowhere. He shows his hands, his wounds. And he commissions the disciples to continue his work. In the scene just before today's story in the Gospel of Luke, 
Two of the disciples are on the road, walking to the village of Emmaus. They are talking to each other about everything that has just happened. And suddenly, a, a stranger joins them. And the stranger says, why do you guys look so sad? What's happened? And they explained that Jesus had been executed and that the women found in the tomb not Jesus' body, but angels who said that he was still alive. The stranger walks with them and opens up the scriptures to them as they're walking. When they reach their destination, the disciples invite the stranger to stay with them, and he accepts their hospitality. And when he breaks the bread at the meal, the disciples' eyes are open, and they realize that the stranger has all along been Jesus. And at that moment of realization, he vanishes. The, the two disciples then go on to talk to the others about what had happened. The disciples are unsure. They've been hearing all of these stories, the women telling the story of the angels in the tomb, and the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. So they're wondering about it, and suddenly Jesus appears to them and says, Peace be with you. Understandably, the disciples are scared and confused at this sudden appearance of Jesus. They are uneasy, and doubts arise. So Jesus begins the work of calming them down. He shows them the physical evidence, the wounds, his hands. He eats broiled fish. These are things that we all share. We all have scars and we all need food. One of my co-pastors in the street ministry told me when I was starting out that as people begin to feel comfortable with you, they will start showing you their scars or whatever injury they might have. I didn't think that it was really a thing. My co-pastor was amazing at what he did. He had so much empathy and understanding that he's just sort of on a different plane from the rest of us. I used to say that he was our Jesus. So I thought that people would show him their scars, that that was part of his ministry and, and a level of their comfort with him. So needless to say, I was completely taken aback the first time a young man lifted up his shirt to show me where he'd been stabbed by his wife with a fork. I learned that my co-pastor was right. There was something meaningful about people showing you their scars. They told stories of a very real life lived. And through the star, stars, there was a statement. Like, I am here, and I am real, and I've survived something, and I'm still here. Of course, when one person started showing the star, others would join in. And there was sort of a bravado about it. And I'm reminded of my friends in high school who would skateboard or play hockey, and they would you know, be very proud of their injuries that they would get and show off. So as soon as one person started showing the scars, the others would join in. And though there was that bravado, and though there was a little bit of competition, just beneath that surface was always the same thing. I've survived, I am here, and I am real, and I suffer. It's part of the human condition. By eating, Jesus also calms the disciples. It's more of that really human experience. I have a friend who goes on very long fasts. And she discovered that it was really hard to get together with her friends while she was on a fast because they just couldn't take that she wasn't eating. So she'd end up getting a granola bar or a cookie or something just to hold it. She wouldn't eat it. Just to hold it so that they would relax in her company. And she explained all this after I had forced her to take a water because <laughs> I wasn't comfortable with her not eating. By eating, Jesus shows the disciples that he's not a ghost. He's not some otherworldly angel. He's doing something we all do. And he's doing something that reminds us of earlier stories. He's eating fish. And that reminds us of the feeding of the 5,000, where a crowd 
crowd had gathered and Jesus was teaching and healing and the day was drawing to a close. When the crowds found out about it, the gospel writer writes, they followed him and welcomed them. And he spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed to be healed. The day was drawing to a close and the twelve came to him and said, send the crowd away so that they may go into the surrounding villages and countryside to lodge and get provisions. For we are here in a deserted place. But he said to them, you give them something to eat. And they said, well, we have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless we're to go buy food for all these people. And Jesus said to his disciples, make them sit down in groups of about 50 each. They did so, and they all sat down. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed and broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. And all ate and were filled. Jesus eating after the resurrection is another miracle meal. And we're also reminded of the Last Supper, when Jesus said, As often as you eat, do this in remembrance of me. As often as you drink, do this in remembrance of me. We're to remember Jesus with each meal. I imagine the disciples seeing Jesus eat were comforted. And they were reminded of these things, the feeding of the 5,000, the Last Supper. And more than that, I imagine how many meals the disciples shared with Jesus, ones that we know nothing about. All that time that they spent traveling with Jesus, working with Jesus, eating with Jesus. And he was there to remind them of that. And in reminding, he boosts them. He shepherds them forward. He helps them get to a place they needed to be in order to continue Jesus' work in the world. The experience of the disciples with Jesus left them changed. They were forever changed by this experience of Jesus. From fearful inaction, they move into sort of this joyful, faithful participants in Jesus' mission. And it's lucky for them to have that physical evidence, that immediate experience. But what sustains modern day Christians without that physical evidence? How do we gain and retain and sustain our faith? Well, I believe we do have physical evidence. We have people and we have community. In 1 Corinthians, Paul even calls the community of faith the body of Christ. We experience the physical evidence through the hard-working hands of our fellow Christians. Think about Christmas and our mitten tree, how Judy organizes that, and everybody knits, all those hands working for people and children in need. I think about how the disciples were comforted by Jesus, and I wonder and imagine how the folks are comforted by the hard-working hands of First Congregational Church's knitters, literally ensconced in their work. We experience the physical evidence in the scars of the homeless people I spoke about earlier. It's a reminder of the suffering that we all share, that Christ shared with us. We experience the physical evidence in shared meals, from the formal ritual of communion an open, communal, shared meal during worship, reenacting the Last Supper, bread and wine, well, juice, because we're congregationalists, to the very informal, very important potluck, because we are, after all, congregationalists. How comforting those old recipes and that food we really look forward to I think of Robbie's clam casserole at our old church, a dish that he made so many times that his children would tease him about it. The potlucks at our old church was the only time I would ever eat jello salad, and I would eat it every time. Food is how we share love. I used to think this was unique to 
my heritage because I'm Polish, but I've learned it's not. I've learned that it's unique to everyone's heritage. It's part of our humanness. Our faith is enhanced and shaped by the people around us, the people we share our grief and our joy and our meals with, the people we work with. Community is the living, physical evidence of Christ Jesus. This is one of the things that has made COVID so difficult for many of us. We all know it's of utmost importance to keep everyone safe and healthy, but isolation can be exhausting. We need our companions of faith to buoy us, to sustain us. We find comfort and healing in community. Just as the disciples' visit with Jesus transformed them from fearful inaction to joyful, faithful participants in Jesus' mission, we are transformed through community as we participate in the living body of the risen Christ. Amen. Our second hymn is Lord Speak to Me That I May Speak, verses 1 and 4, number 397 in your pilgrim hymnal.
another mass shooting. We pray for the victims and their families, continued racism. We pray for the victims and their families. We pray that we can find a peaceful solution and move towards a righteous and wonderful world that we know is possible. Help us to find our way through that work. We have special prayers this morning for Edith and Flossie and Donna and all of our friends living safe but somewhat isolated life during COVID. We pray for everyone who has experienced loss. We pray for people living today with the repercussions of colonialism. We need deep healing. May you grant us peace and understanding. In your holy name we pray. You know, if you would join me for the prayer the disciples were taught by Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.